Hello, thank you for joining us for this talk about the Prisma 2020 flow diagram app and the significant updates that have been made over the past year. My name is Chris Pritchard, I'm the current maintainer of the app and I'm a senior lecturer in paramedic practice and emergency care in the Institute of Health and Allied Professions at Nottingham Trent University. My colleague Neil Hadaway, who is the founder and organiser of EsmaConf, um, has also been a great help with this presentation and was the previous maintainer of the package. In addition to myself and Neil, um, Luke McGuinness did a lot of work at the start in turning a lot of the concepts into reality. Um, and we've also had some additional contributions this year from um, Hossam Hamadi, who works for Rayan. Um, they wanted to implement a function to enable the app to be called directly from within Rayan. So they did so and contributed the code back to um, our community um, and also to Brennan Chapman who contributed a feature to enable the app to work with Tibbles um, as well as data frames. So what is the app for? Well um, the Prisma reporting standards were updated in 2020 as I'm sure you're all aware um, but within that um, updated um, set of standards there was an updated flow diagram um, to aid in the reporting and visualization and reviews and I think they're really important in making it clear where articles were um, identified and which stage in the process they were um, excluded or reached inclusion. Um, the reporting standards when the, in their update contain a bit more information than in previous versions of the Prisma statement um, and that made the flow diagram a bit more complex and um, even before the 2020 update, um, they could be quite time consuming to create. So no one's idea of fun is sitting around trying to move uh, move text boxes on a word processor. Um, but that was often what was needed was some quite fiddly work. So this app was born. Uh, so it provides an R package, so you can use it directly from within R, um, but also as a hosted shiny app um, that requires no coding knowledge whatsoever um, to enable these flow diagrams to be generated and created, and then exported in the function in interactive HTML. So you can use click on links to take you to other parts of a review, but also um, in PNG, SVG, and PDF formats, for example. Um, in order to actually populate the flow diagram, you can enter values directly within the web app or pass them to the R uh, functions themselves. You can use a provided template CSV, or, uh, and this is new for this year, you can call the app directly with some URL parameters to uh, complete the uh, autofill some of the boxes. So over the past year, we've made some significant updates. So uh, there was a big code cleanup last summer um, and the automatic calculation of node positions is now uh, part of the app. So instead of uh, relying on manually calculated and entered um, values for where, the, where each box goes, they're calculated relative to each other. Um, this was really needed because otherwise we couldn't move on to the next thing which is conformity to the prisma s um extension so um for additional reporting standards for um the lit review part of the sorry there's uh, literature search part of your review um, by being able to include specific databases or registers as you can see from the uh, image in the top left um, and also then this addition of URL parameters which enable the app to be uh, embedded more easily within other tools as I said um, Rayan built this into their um, the premium version of their um, product um, and then contributed the code back to the community so um, Within the code cleanup, um, this was done because the code was a bit difficult to read. Um, so lots of um, functions were perhaps all on one line, which made them a bit harder to um, deal with, um, but also had hard coded figures for, for example, for box heights and box positions, variable names that weren't always clear and also uh, lacked in comments in places. So the code was very functional. It did what we wanted it to do, but didn't really allow for extensibility and building on that to, to build in new features. So as such, um, a code review took place. So I used Visual Studio Code and a package called Lintar um, to really support with that. So um, was able to sort of analyze the source code files and work out what was needed to make them more readable and more consistent. 
Um, but also within that code review um, was able to replace hard coded numbers and values with ratios and variables. So boxes are positioned relative to each other instead. Um, so that's the Prisma get POS function enables us to do that. Um, and we're also able to programmatically alter the height of a box depending on the number of lines of um, text in them which again is really useful because it makes it easier to add new nodes to the package um, so if for example a new um, updated set of guidelines was released that required reporting of additional information that would now be easier to add into this package than it was before that moves us on to uh, talking about the Prisma S conformity. So the Prisma S extension is specifically for reporting the literature search part of your review. Um, and I'd encourage everyone who's um, writing up a, a systematic review to to absolutely um, you know follow those. Um, but they require the number of records retrieved from each individual database or register. So as you can see, we now have a way of doing that, uh, both through the R package and the template CSV, but also from the website. So you can see here, we've got each uh, database separated by semicolons, and that, that creates a nice, straightforward, easy to use package. So that's great. Um, and finally, um, we can now pre-populate fields in the Shiny app via URL parameters. And I'll talk more about that in the tutorial um, that I'm going to produce in terms of how that actually works. But the real valuable and and um, exciting thing about this is it means it can be integrated much more easily within other tools and packages. Um, and any numeric field within the CSV file can be um, passed as a... Um, pre-populated field and I would like to work on um, passing the non-numeric fields so for example those um, those specific databases and registers I'd like to work on passing them um, as um, values in the near future um, but for now it supports any numeric field within the CSV file and um, finally I'd like to talk a little bit about you know what the reach of this package is and the impact so within the hosted um version on shinyapps.io uh, we use some analytics uh, they're just aggregated statistics uh, rather than any personally identifiable information um but um we can see that this has been accessed globally um, and in the last 90 days for example over 18,000 unique visitors to the to the site so um it's a big tool it's being used by lots of people um, and in part that's because it's recommended on the Prisma statement website it's part of the editorial guidelines for journal submission in some journals including BMJ evidence-based practice um, but I think the big thing is because it's useful um, and I just want to say thank you to all of our users because if it wasn't used this much then we wouldn't put the work into making it better um, so I just want to say yeah again a big big thank you for that so um thank you for listening to this talk um as i said my name is chris pritchard um i'm more than happy to take questions uh, via mastodon or twitter um and thank you once again for watching <laughs>